this is this is the one question I most dislike, and it always crops up. Actually, but usually you've done it differently. It usually, comes up at the end of an interview, where it goes well, Michael. Um, then, if you have one last piece of advice to give our viewers, our listeners, to make them into great photographers, what would it be? And of course, there is not one single piece of advice. Otherwise, I wouldn't be writing all these books, trying to trying to reach that point. But there are a few things that it's worth saying, which is becoming a, a good photographer, meaningful photographer, is in here, it's not in the piece of equipment. Photography has always had this strange relationship between what we call in English the kit, the gear, uh, the equipment, the shiny toys, and the actual picture making, the thinking that goes behind it, which happens between the brain and the eye. So you do need equipment, and I, I spend, in my career, I spend a lot of money on equipment, um, and I value it, etc. but you need to keep a sense of proportion. So I hope that wasn't going to be your next question. Well, I, I don't know that you have to understand other people's minds, but you have to understand your own mind and know where it can take you in making a, making a picture. I've been writing books about photography for a, a long time. In fact, the first one that I, I wrote, I shouldn't have written because I didn't know enough about photography to write it, but the publisher wanted it. And it was, it was a learning experience, a successful book. But as interest in photography has grown, and it really has grown incredibly much more than I would have imagined. Uh, as interest in serious photography uh, from, from the, the broad public. Then, of course, there are a lot of people writing about photography, a lot of books, and I rapidly lost interest in writing about the equipment, um, mainly because there are a lot of people who do it better than I do, because that's all they're focused on. And I, I too, as a photographer, I'm thinking about a new piece of equipment, I'll, I want to see reviews and stuff like that. So anyway, that area of writing about photography is actually oversubscribed. So many years ago, I stepped back and thought, well, I mean, what's actually important? As a professional photographer with friends, mainly in uh, reportage, editorial anyway, what are the things that concern us? The equipment side is sort of very low level in the sense that you you've already learned how to operate your equipment um, to the point where you shouldn't even be thinking about it. So what we concern ourselves much more with is uh, things like the timing, the meaning behind the shot, what the purpose of the picture is, the composition. So all of these things are in fact technical in the sense that they're techniques, but they're deeper to me, deeper more meaningful techniques than twiddling a... On the matter of creative thinking, creativity, this is, this is very interesting. I've given a lot of talks and quite often in the questions at the end, somebody asks something the equivalent of, how can I be creative in my photography? Um, I already know how to do this and that, but how can I you know, have some sort of style? It sounds like an impossible question to answer. How can you become creative? Can you become creative? But I thought, well, you know, if a lot of people want the answer to the question, it's worth thinking about, worth trying to answer. Um, well, I got quite interested in what does creativity mean? I think across all fields, it depends on whether or not you think you treat creativity as a sort of absolute of uh, genius or whether a, there are degrees of creativity. So I think the traditional philosophical view, Immanuel Kant considered creativity to be, as he put it, the province of genius. So there's nothing more to be said. I mean, these are special, special people, godlike, that don't even, don't even think about going there. 
but actually in, in the world we live in today, where there are all kinds of activities like um, making books involve some form of creativity. There are degrees of it. I think that if the, the, the first qualification, primary qualification, is the ambition. If, if you have within yourself the, the urge to do something more interesting, sort of get a spark going, then you're prime for it. It's not possible for everyone, but for most people who want to, yes, you can start doing exercises like, you know, creative exercises, try this, try that, to improve it. Two questions. What is beautiful in different areas, whether we're talking about people or scenery or ideas, whether you should be, whether it's worth pursuing that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is, uh, it's a consensus. It's what a large number of people agree is beautiful. So there's very little independent thinking about beauty actually. So there are conventions and for instance if you take the face, the human face, then there are, again it gets complicated if you just, when you just start talking about which cultures, Northern European culture, then there are certain standards which at any one time, because it, it changes with fashion, uh, a person's face is considered to be beautiful, to do with the size of the eyes, the spacing and stuff like that. And I, I, I talked to someone, an American um, researcher who'd done some research on proportions and what's considered. Anyway, and you can extend that through other things as well, like beauty in landscape and beauty in lighting. And one of the dangers of this is that it, you end up with a kind of prescription and people believing that that's what looks good. So for instance, you know, what we call golden light when the sun is low is considered to be you know, the, the best. But if you slavishly follow that, you, you're doing nothing of any interest. It's easy enough to understand what is considered beautiful within any genre, but doggedly pursuing it only gets you to a certain place. And because there are so many other people doing that, and this goes back to creativity. Creativity, to quite an extent, means challenging the norms. Of course, just being different may, may not usually not enough, okay? but it's something at least to consider. And there's another aspect, which is the techniques for making things look beautiful, which kind of basic professional photographic techniques, particularly in fashion, advertising, uh, studio work, why not apply them to really ugly subjects? For instance, Irving Penn, the great American photographer in his still life work, he did um, he did a series, he had his assistants collect from the streets perfect cigarette butts and made it huge, well quite big, platinum prints of squashed cigarette butts. Beautifully lit, that's why I said it's an ironic uh, idea of looking good. Because you can make things that are generally not regarded as beautiful look beautiful. And in doing that you sort of bring into question, well, the whole thing. In English, it's come to mean an idea or a, an image or words, form of words that have been so heavily used as to be absolutely meaningless mm -hmm. and therefore a sign of laziness uh, in the person committing them. But it, cliches become cliches quite often because they were a pretty good idea to start with and then everyone latched onto them. Interests got devalued, you know. But generally speaking, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the things is to try and avoid cliché. Uh, this is not all it seems to be because I, I, I deliberately chose a nice word. But let's say that a lot of photography and for much of its history has been concerned with some form of excitement, interest, um, action. And the, the, the assumption is that you're going for the best moment, the 
most dramatic, strongest, right? Uh, whether it's timing or lighting or composition, expression in a face. But for every idea, there's a counter idea, and the counter idea to that is, is withdrawal, stepping back, being detached. I mean, I'm personally ambivalent about this because the way I put it sounds fine, but if then you determinedly reject all ways of, of, of creating interest in a picture, then it, it's, a, it's a creative statement that I, I don't personally have very much sympathy for. Probably the most well-known instant moment of this is the Dusseldorf School, the, the Beckett's who uh, gave rise to uh, people like Gursky and, uh, and Thomas Struth and, and Ruff, who I believe are known collectively as Strufsky. It's a sort of art joke. That idea was to basically remove all the obvious emotional and, uh, and uh, compositional and technical uh, devices to make something interesting and, and be, we would say, deadpan. What I'm doing in, in this book actually is, is trying to uh, produce the opposite ideas to what a normally uh, m most people would, would normally subscribe to and say, well, you know, you don't have to like these ideas and frankly, I don't like a lot of them, but you have to consider them. You've got to see where you are in, there's always a, there are scales, if you like, between beauty and ugliness or beauty and disharmony and between excitement and quiet. If you can see that there's a range of possibilities, you can also find your comfortable place in that. Um, and therefore you'll be more aware of uh, the, the aesthetics of, of what goes on. So what you mean? What does what does somebody have to do if they want to go down that route? Well, apart from the the rather obvious answer, of please buy the book, because I I spent quite a lot of time trying to cover all the bases. You know, actually one one useful piece of advice is that don't believe in sound bites. Don't believe in simple single answers. Um, so I mean, that's really my retort to that question, is. Please don't believe that there's a, a, a sort of silver bullet. What you do have to do is put a bit of, a bit of time into thinking, experimenting, trying things out. And throughout all kinds of art, the, the good stuff usually comes up during the process of doing it, often over years. And you can start by thinking, OK, I know what to do. I've got this great idea, great way of great approach and you start on that and fine but you know some years down the line you may find that what you've learnt by doing it has changed your mind completely so in the end let me say this although with with books like this you do have to sit down and read them actually photography is about getting out getting up and doing it is the only way to having absorbed all the information advice that you can is to go out and try it for yourself because you'll learn in the process of doing that.